This is Three Black Guys with a Mic, episode nine. First of all, let me tell you something. Lamont is just full of shit. Sometimes my mama say, you know, you don't have nothing nice to say. You <laughs> should be quiet. You said that Stephen A is a coon. You agree with that? Everybody got quiet on that one, okay? Uh, 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 are you drinking, man? I don't know. Are you drinking? <laughs> I don't even understand how you could even put Common and, and Bob, Marley Bob Marley and, and Marvin, Marvin Gaye. Gaye and even Marvin Gaye. I'm saying, who's on your iPhone, iPad? Who's in your playlist right now? Did they say this? Man, I know you a little bit on the right. And Lamont, I know you got that country club lifestyle. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Three Black Guys with a Mic. Hey, real quick before we start the show, right after this episode, we want you to give us some feedback. You like it, you hate it, you can't stand Maynard, or you like Lamont, or you love Maynard, and you can't stand Lamont. Either way, we want to know. Go to iTunes, Google Play, or however you listen to this podcast, rate us, and leave us a review. That's how we get more listeners, you know? So we need you to subscribe to this podcast if you like it. Tell your friends about it, and download it right at iTunes. Also, be sure to check us out on our website at 3blackguyswithamike.com, and be sure to join in on the conversation on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash 3blackguys. And now, let's start the show. Anyway, let's get it popping. Welcome to episode nine of Three Black Guys with a Mic. We are nine episodes in, ladies and gentlemen. It is Spud Lamont Hayes and my man Maynard Scales from SuburbanBlack.com, BWP Marketing, Hype Voice Radio. Let's do it, fellas. We got to talk about Steve Harvey, man. Let's kick it off with Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey. And all these black people meeting with Donald Trump. Are they selling out or are they standing up now? If you guys saw, I'm sure the whole world has seen that Steve Harvey went to Trump Tower and, you know, he said that President Barack Obama said, hey, look, I need you to go and meet with Steve, I mean, with uh, with with, with uh, Donald Trump and meet with his people and let him know about what's going on in the inner cities. And I thought that Steve Harvey handled it very well when he came out of the actual Trump Tower and he was on CNN. I watch CNN a lot, but he was on um, the news. But anyways, so. All of a sudden, D.L. Hughley decides that he's going to go off on Steve Harvey and Donald Trump. If Donald Trump cared about black people, he wouldn't denigrate the president with those claims of birtherism. He wouldn't have Stokes fear. He wouldn't be racist fear and saying that this man is less and not one of us to become president. DL also said that meeting with a rapper and a football player and a comic is exactly what America only sees black people as. And that's the reason why he will meet with with a a, a football player and and a comic and, and and a rapper. So, Lamont, let's start with you. Are these people selling out? Or are they standing up for the black community? Is Steve Harvey selling out or is he standing up? Well, here's my beef with Steve. And I got some questions that go back to all the way to 2010. Is Steve Harvey had, um, let me take that back. Bernie Mac, God rest his soul. He did an interview in GQ magazine and he talked about how him and Steve used to be beefing. And Steve had did some really sneaky, shady kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying, in, in the comedic world, you know what I'm saying? And there was all being all these little undertones of Steve being X, Y, and Z. And again, I don't know. I wasn't there. But I'm, I'm just looking at Steve's behavior and how he, how he has moved and how he is moving. And, I mean, it just don't feel good. It just don't, it don't, it don't smell right. It's just like... You know, again, Steve, you, you know, that's not really your lane. Your lane is, you know, you're going to tell the ladies, you know, how to keep a man. What, what, what was it, Maynard? Five steps, how to keep a man or keep a black man or Asian man or whatever kind of man. And he going to sell you a green dot on the show. And he going <laughs> to, you know what I'm saying? My man I did Steve. see that in the buyer the other day. I said, oh I said my Steve, God. you might be going a little bit too far with the green dot dog card. Yeah, you know dog. what I'm saying? You know, Steve wants to say you're a green dot. You know what I'm saying? He giving you X, Y, and Z. And again, I just think Steve has to be very careful. And we're not to say that he's not an educated brother at all. But he's playing in an arena that, you know what, that the best of us, we've been used over the years. You know what I'm saying? Used for basically our our fan base. You know what I'm saying? Our database. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that if, if this is a Steve Harvey of 15 years ago, 
And, you know, Donald still would have been in this space that he's in now. He wouldn't have called Steve. He would have called somebody else. But let me ask so, you this question, though. You know, be made before you make your comments. So is it better for us to have a seat at the table? Because that's what he was saying. Steve Harvey, you know, went on his radio show and he said, you know, it. I think that it's better for us to have a seat at the table. And this is how you get change done. Is he selling out because he wants to have a seat at the table? Or is it better for us to actually have a seat at the table, you know, with the Donald Trump administration and seeing how we can work with, you know, Donald Trump rather rather than, you know, boycotting and, and protesting and, and not being a part of what Donald Trump is going to do. Well, see, here's my thing of what we talk about the seat at the table. And just give me this, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you get it, is that if this is about, you know, helping a certain amount of, of people in a certain community and, and X, Y, and Z and a- economic this and that, I just have this thought process that if, if Steve Harvey tomorrow wanted to be able to do, you know, some of the things he might talk to, talk to Donald Trump about, he don't need Donald for that. If, if Steve needed to go raise capital, if Steve needed to execute, Steve can do that stuff all on his own. He doesn't need Donald Trump to do some of those things that, you know, they probably talked about in that particular meeting, because at the end of the day, Steve got that juice on his own. He don't need Donald. So, again, I don't even know or question this whole seat at the table conversation, because, again, Steve, you can do it on your own, brother. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of. I'm looking at it with one eye, you know? And the reason why I asked that question real quick, man, and I'm sorry, you know, the reason why I asked that question is because, you know, if you look at a rapper and you look at a you know, football player and a comedian, right? And I had this conversation with somebody the other day, you know, because they were telling me, you know, Donald Trump is not going to meet with people who are in power. So he's not going to meet with a John Lewis. He's not going to meet with the Congressional Black Caucus or the NAACP or anybody like that. He might fear those people. I don't know. But if a Kanye West or Steve Harvey is more influential, you know, to being in uh, Donald Trump's ear. Is that better than nobody being in his ear? Am I allowed to speak now, y'all? Yes, you are. I'm sorry. Okay. 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 All right. Yo. Hey, hello, world. This is Maynard. I mean, finally, I get a chance to speak. I mean, they keep me, you know, kind of down doing the the damn dirty We did that for a reason. Okay. I I know y'all did. Y'all hate me. Y'all some damn haters. So anyhow, um, I feel like uh, but the seat at the table is the conversation that we really need to be talking about. And you're and Steve is right. We need a seat at the table. And at the same time, while we need a seat at the table, what you know, I work somewhere, everybody has a job or a, or an organization that they work with. And when somebody comes to me and says that, yo, I really want to discuss such and such, so and so and so and this, let's say you happen to be in the military and somebody in your private first class, so and so, whatever, or your surgeon who's he what's he, whatever the case may be, and the reporter walks up to you and says, I'd like to discuss with you such and such and so forth. You think this is an opportunity for us to get a seat at the table. But what you're supposed to do is say, ma'am, I appreciate the question, sir. I appreciate the question, Mr. President, whoever. I appreciate the question. The person that speaks in reference to this is this other person. Steve, thank you for making certain that everyone knows we need a seat at the table. But your ass ain't supposed to be sitting in it. You supposed to afford that seat or that invitation to the right person. And if Don Trump won't speak to the person that you think is right, whether it's John Lewis, the NAACP, Urban League, you name it, then it's not your place to take that seat. You ain't it ain't your place to take that seat. Even Don though Trump President asked, Barack Obama asked him to go. You, you know what? Don Trump should just ask President Barack Obama to come to the table then. No, it's not no. I'm gonna say this. There's a lot of things that I know that Barack Obama probably has done, and he probably has said to Steve Harvey, hey, I think you should step up a little bit and use your mic for a good cause instead of just some negative bullshit strawberry letter 24 shit. But, Steve, you're not the person I want to see talking to Don Trump because, I mean, at the end of the day, your radio show is is, is the coonery and buffoonery that Puff was talking about. Wait a minute. Careful, 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 careful. You're too early, bro. You're, You're too, too early. I don't too give early. a front door. <laughs> too early, playboy. Too early. Our program director said we can't we can't use the word we can't use the F word no more. Our program director said we can't use the F word. I don't give a flying in fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sipping on this corn mash. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why y'all going off 
about Steve Harvey. I like Steve Harvey, man. Steve Harvey, Steve he came in, Harvey. he did the jump, no, hold, and you hold, know, hold, he got hold, think hold, like hold. a man, and you know, he did his, uh, I read his books, and you know, Steve you Harvey's his cool. books? I did. You read, you read, oh, man, you, I'm, but I love you like a, you know, you know, you my brother, for real, for real. You read Steve Harvey's books? You yeah, can't ever, uh, like, not think like a man. I didn't read Think Like a Man. No, I didn't really think like a man. I did go see the movie, though, but, you know, my wife wanted to see so, that. My dude was in The Kings of Comedy. What's wrong with Bernie? that? Hold on. That, Bernie, Bernie and Cedric might qualify as high-ranking officials of comedy. Steve and DL, they don't even really get in the damn... They don't even in. They not even the gestures. They not eat... Kings? And he, he was in The Kings of Comedy when Eddie Murphy was... Who still is alive? You can't even think about calling y'all the kings of comedy. Oh, you well, know, you know that was Mark. Alive. Dog, you went to come Mark, on. Man, don't say, don't say that. Don't just don't say. Why are you going up? A, well, here's, here's a better because I don't know why you going up for D.L. Hughley. I like D.L. Oh, Hughley. Oh, oh. Steve, like... Harvey, Steve Harvey was the worst of the four of them. And hey, tell me I'm wrong. Well, he was the host, oh, so he didn't really get to go in. So he, he so really he he should have said he's the MC he's the <laughs> king of the scene. So, <laughs> Maynard, Maynard, the Maynard, 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 Maynard. This is why we kept you in your box in the corner <laughs> because when we when we freaking let you out, you, you just you just. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right to the PD. You hear me? All right, <laughs> all right. Freaking let you out you before just, we. Right, right. Before yeah. we move on, let me just ask you about Dio Hughley. So was Dio Hughley wrong for going in on Steve Harvey? And well, I understand his, you know, his position on Donald Trump, but was he wrong, you know, going no. in on on Steve Harvey? No, he was. He was. He was on. Look, Dio Hughley is not is not my favorite comic. He's not very funny, but. D.L. Hughley was 100% right. I, I, I appreciate his comments. And I appreciate Steve Harvey for trying to be a part of something. But you got to recognize, Steve, when you are you in over your head, Don Trump has played smarter people than you. He played 15 Republican candidates. He played them like some like they, he was playing chess while they were playing. They weren't even playing checkers. They were playing like tiddlywings. And he just made them look stupid. W played Hillary. Played the American people. Steve Harvey, what makes you think that you got the chess skills to get involved with, with this dude right now? Dude, you're not the right man. You're not the right dude to get down with, Steve, with um, Don Trump. I need you to just back up and let some smarter people with some more Machiavellian skill sets. Jim Brown? Jump in Jim. No, next. Ray <laughs> Lewis, next. Please, Jim Brown. Jim Brown stopped being relevant a thousand years ago. Be respectful, Maynard. Be respectful. I'm respectful. He's not relevant. What did he do during the Barack Obama administration? How many times do you see Jim Brown? He still got his up? gang thing going on. He is, you know what I'm saying, trying to help out with the gang initiative. Did you hear about that in the past eight years? Anyways, uh, 28, right, right. 28 Democrats is... <laughs> 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 Moving on, 28 Democrats have decided that they're not going to go to the Trump inauguration. Uh, John, you know, Conyers, you know... Uh, John Lewis, Yvette Clark, 25 other, you know, people said that they're not going to the inauguration because what Donald Trump had to say about John Lewis, you know. So I, I got to ask, man, you know, Maynard, is this going to hurt the Democratic Party or are we going to be all right? You know, us not being at the actual inauguration. We're going to be all right. I mean, quite honestly, a whole lot of people ain't going to be at the inauguration. And, you know, Don Trump. He took a shot at um, Arnold Schwarzenegger like two, a week and a half back when the first ratings came out on The Apprentice. And like, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't get the ratings I got. Imagine this. When somebody says, it takes Donald Trump's comments and then they juxtapose them, which means essentially compares them, Lamont, just to let you know, um, to Barack you, Obama's. I, I, I was trying to Google. I was trying to Google, Playboy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When they, when they, when they compare Don Trump's inaugura uh, uh, first day inauguration numbers to Barack Obama's first time inauguration numbers. And then he's going to say, then then what you going to say then? Because he's not going to achieve the rating point that Barack achieved. Yeah, so, but I mean, you know, he is the president at this point. I mean, it, you know, I think we got to give him, this is what Jim Brown said. He's the president and we got to accept it. And I think that, 
you know, the Democrats should not be protesting. I mean, I do understand that they're, you know, they're, they're in their feelings in regards to, you know, what he had to say about John Lewis. But, you know, John Lewis calling him an illegitimate president was a shot as well. You know, Maxine Waters said, I'll never, ever, never, ever contemplated attending the inauguration or any activities with Donald Trump. It would be a waste of time. I mean, going back to the seat at the table, isn't this an opportunity to have a seat at the table? No, they got no. The inauguration is just a party. The inauguration is a celebration. Running the country and being in position of uh, in a position of power—that's your seat at the table. The fact that Maxine Waters or John Lewis or Meeks or Cory Booker or whoever may decide that they're not going to go—and I don't know if Cory Booker has said that he's not going to go or not—I don't want to put that on his name—but whoever black or whoever who is not in opposition to Donald Trump decides that they're not going to go. But if they're an elected official, if they're a person of influence, maybe it's Mark Morial of the Urban League or Ben Jones of of NAACP or whoever it may be. It may be Lamont's favorite person, Van Jones. Or if Ben Carson, decide, that's his man or, as well. Well, you know, Ben Carson's going <laughs> well, to get his seat at the table. <laughs> he already got his seat at the table. <laughs> right, right. With chains on his wrist. Um, right. But that's a whole other thing. You know, um, I don't appreciate you going off on Van Jones neither, man. I like Van Jones, man. I like uh, Steve Harvey too, man. Come on, man. No, I think Lamont. I think I think Lamont. I think Lamont's on about the whole. I said slave. Uh, I call it, um, old boy a slave. Is that man, what you're saying, about, Lamont? It's about time for you to go back to your box, man. You, you, ben you, so you, you get a lot of line play, boy. You got go Ben Carson about- and his Ben Carson and his. You know, you remember that? Remember in um, was a Hollywood Shuffle and the slaves were leaving and. And and the slave that essentially is Ben Carson is like, what's wrong with y'all? Massa, he beat us on Tuesday. He feed us on Wednesday. <laughs> my, oh, my bad. My bad. I went somewhere hey, can different. We, can, we, Lamont, can we get the program director back? We got a couple of other things that we need to talk about that we yes. can talk about on this I show tonight. Man, go, go to your room. Go to your room, man. I ain't got no four letter words, man. I ain't got no four letter words. You ain't got no four letter words, but dang. There's some things that you might not be able to say around these parts, man. We got a program director now. Right. You, you, hold on, hold on. I, I'm sorry. We, you're right. We got a program director, and she's going to have to forgive me. Fortunately, the FCC doesn't care because this ain't broadcast. So Ben Carson ain't no house nigga. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Carson ain't, ben Carson ain't a house nigga. No, Ben Carson. Think. No, I don't think so. I don't think oh, so. Okay, okay all right. so all right, let, me, let me say this before we go to a break real quick. So you're saying that Ben Carson is, is a, a house, house nigga. nigga. Okay, and you also saying that you know, Omarosa House Negro as well. So anybody who's basically black that's working with Donald Trump is basically a sellout. That's pretty much you know everything that we talked about. We go back to Steve Harvey, we go back to Jim Brown, Kanye West. Anybody who's supporting who's black that's supporting I didn't say, you know no, Donald. I'm not so saying okay, that. so tell me why. I'm not saying that. Let me go back to you know what I'm saying this, and Lamont, I want you to get in on this as well. Do you think that it is? Better for us to have a seat at the table. Is it better for Amarosa? I ain't mad at Amarosa. Get your check, girl. Anyways, is it better for Amarosa to have a seat at the table? Ben Carson, even though his ass ain't qualified to be running no damn HUD, is it better for him to be... No, I. you know what? Forget I even said that, because that's some bullshit. That boy don't need to be no damn HUD. <laughs> that boy don't need to be... <laughs> Let me tell you damn something about... HUD. Sorry, I even said all that, man. I'm sorry I even said all that. Anyway, go ahead, man, and then we'll go to a break. So Omarosa, I mean, you know, Omarosa has the, the she, I mean, she got the voluptuousness jumping off. And, and you know, I, Omarosa ain't fine? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no. You, you need to fall back, G. Fall it is now, back. It is officially now time to go to break right now on that. <laughs> 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 We'll be right back right after this with three black guys with a mic. Uh, uh. It's 2017. It's time to get your appetite right, man. Stop eating all that frozen food. You need to get fresh food. That's why the big news about Wendy's 4 for 4 meal just got even bigger. And we going to 2017 with big things with Wendy's. See how the choice of a junior bacon cheeseburger or a crispy chicken BLT that sounds good right about now just changed the value game all over again. No more eating all of that Frozen food. We only getting it fresh in 2017. Meal includes the choice of a junior bacon cheeseburger or a crispy chicken BLT, four-piece nugget, small fries, and a drink. Can't get that anywhere else in the world. You heard me? That's why you need to head over to Wendy's. Get it all fresh. Fresh. Never frozen. Stop putting all that frozen food in your body. Get it fresh from Wendy's. 
Often not valid in Alaska and Hawaii. And now back to the show. Welcome back to Three Black Guys with a Mic, Episode 9. Uh, we are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I really hate to, you know, do this next topic. You know, we have to do this next topic. I'm very scared uh, about doing this next topic, but with what respect you to... Of? What you scared of? What you I'm, scared I'm of? I'm just scared, you know, to do this next topic. But, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we have to do it. Uh, I do want to say that the views and opinions of three black guys at a mic are not the views and opinions of Maynard Scales. And, uh, I'm about to say something. I'm about to say some very tastefully and crafted I, shit. And I do want to just say, you know, uh, again, that, you know, we truly, 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 um, you know, want to say, Send our condolences to Bishop Eddie Long and, you know, his congregation and his church. And may he rest in peace. You know, he passed away from cancer uh, yesterday, actually. And on social media, uh, they're having a field day with uh, the passing of Bishop Eddie Long. And people are commenting, stating that, you know, it's God's punishment and um, that, you know, people should mourn the victims, you know, more than the actual bishop. And if you go on to Global Grind, I forgot the guy who wrote the uh, article. I do want to give you your props because it was a really good article, my brother. Um, I think his name was Bowie or something like that. But anyway, GlobalGrind.com, I saw an article. And it talked about, you know, should we actually mourn the victims, you know, more than mourning the loss of Bishop Eddie Long. Now, if you don't know, you know, Bishop Eddie Long has some controversy in 2010 in regards to him. Uh, molesting, you know, four young men. Uh, they was allegedly, 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 allegedly. Uh, I ain't you know, got no money to be sued. I can't. You cannot get me sued. Exactly. So they, he was. They said that you know Bishop Eddie Long used his power and position as a pastor to entice you know these young men to sexual relationships and taking them on international trips and buying them gifts and paying for cars and housing and tuition and damn where was I at when they was giving out that kind of money? Anyways, uh, under the guise <laughs> you know they father figure, oh, oh, spiritual oh. sons in the church. Anyway, so here's a here's a part that we want to get into. Uh, you know, should we be mourning the victims more than Bishop Eddie Long? And in the last sentence of the actual article, it said that, you know, Bishop Eddie Long has died, but the sins of abusing and silencing victims still lives. It's time for the church to put it to rest. So Maynard and ladies and gentlemen, again, the views and opinions of three black guys with a mic are not the views and opinions of Maynard Scales. Oh, should the church so, put this to rest? Should we be mourning the victims more than we mourn Bishop Eddie Long? So let me say this. Again, it's alleged that um, Bishop Eddie Long touched these boys or did something with these boys. I will say these things. I have a very good friend, my best friend in life. His name is Preston Hickman. Shout out to my dude, Press. I, I love that dude with all my heart. He's been my my homie. We since get it. We, were like we get it. We ten. get it. We get it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Lamont and Spud, we've been down for going on 20 years in a minute, right? Do y'all have a picture of me at all, really? No, we don't even want to see you on the Skype feed. <laughs> Man, when, when you get to the point, we, I, the, what do you mean? I have a wife, I have a family. Like, right, I don't so want a picture the, of you in my house. Shut up! What are you talking about? Shut, you almost made me curse again. <laughs> you got a program director now, Paul Bashy. Uh, uh, so the whole thing is this: I'm not going to look. My question would be because I don't know enough about how Christianity is supposed to work. But if there was something in your life and you died with that unresolved, it, can your, because you said rest in peace, can your soul truly rest in peace if would, if you lived a life where you could not bring things to rest? And can you really rest in peace? That's one. Two, I got a problem with this situation because, you know, a couple of months ago, I think it was October, uh, Eddie Long reemerged and he looked very, he looked decimated. He was, you know, some 125, 30 pounds lighter than he had been at his height when he was taking pictures and Snapchatting himself to uh, um, four young men, you know, which is, you know, a whole other thing. But he looked decimated. And my question is, and then he said, the reason why I look smaller is because of my vegan lifestyle. And then he turns around and dies suddenly of an aggressive cancer. 
aggressive is the word they use. Now, a couple of things that happened, and I'm not here to you know cause any con- conspiracy about this, but normally when somebody says cancer, they say it's breast cancer or lung cancer or colon or prostate or brain or stomach or some kind of thyroid cancer or something. They just said aggressive cancer, and that's fine. I, you know, it's not my part. But he was the leader of a church. And in fact, in black churches, often the wife of the leader of the church is called the first lady. So we, these people follow him. You can't be a leader unless you have followers. Don't you think that Eddie Long had a responsibility to say, this is not because of my vegan lifestyle. Listen, I'm dealing with cancer. There are lots of, there are 10,000 people who come to this church. There are lots of black men in this church. Listen, dudes, y'all need to get yourselves checked out. Y'all need to get your colons checked and your prostates checked. Y'all need to be, because he's he has an opportunity at leadership to say, this may take me out. I don't know. But if we had caught this earlier, y'all need to get y'all need to get yourselves checked out. Get physicals. Be be cognizant of your health. I know this is a different question. I don't want to get into it because I think Eddie Long did some gay shit, but that's a whole other thing. Hey but, man, hey, 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 hey! Wait a minute, you're going long, and then you use the S word. Whoa! I think I think the program director said shit was was legal. Shit's legal. Let me hold on. Let me look at. Let me. Yeah, we can't say. <laughs> You can't say fuck no more. I didn't say fuck. Oh, damn. You can't say fuck no more. Okay, cool. All right, gotcha. Okay, Okay, gotcha. We can say shit and damn and ass. We just can't say (laughs) fuck or motherfucker no more. (laughs) So all I'm saying is, and it's okay. Oh, and we can't say nigga no more neither. Okay, so we got those out of the way. (laughs) The idea that he preached so, so vehemently against homosexuality, that's the only reason why I say that I think that he may be involved with something homosexual because it's, it's some, there's some hypocritical piece to it. But hey, come on, slow really? slow up, man. Slow up. You going to you, slow up. Wrong with, what's wrong with calling him out if he was a hypocrite? What's wrong with calling out a hypocrite? I mean, come on, dude. You mean to tell me there's been times in your life, Spud, and we've been cool. We call each other Cugino, which is cousin in Italian. Did you said, yo, you know what? I'm looking kind of strong today. I'm going to take a picture of myself in this muscle shirt and send it to Cugino. You ain't never said no shit like that. No, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> right. So who does that? What man, what heterosexual man sends a picture of himself in a muscle shirt with the bathtub in the background to another man? Lamont, you want to send me that picture? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm feeling really strong I, coming from the gym, I might see that photo, Playboy. Oh, so, no. what you, so what are you saying? Are you challenging my masculinity because okay. I want you to see my muscles? Is that I'm, what you're saying? I'm saying and, I'm, and I just came out the bathtub? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Are, are you not comfortable? I'm uh, looking at me like that? I'm uncomfortable with. You. Uh, I think is I think a, the I'm bigger question is is should a should a bishop done that? Should a bishop have actually okay. sent that picture? That probably well, you know is a different well, line of story. Well, you know what? And again, you know, let let, let me take this ball for a minute. <clears throat> and like you said earlier, we want to definitely send the condolences out not only to his family but to his t- congregation. You know, who, who are definitely are, are currently in a state of mourning. And and I just think that you know th- there were some questionable behaviors by this individual, as you said, you know, Bishop Eddie Long, as the head of the church. I mean, period, point blank. We understand that he is human, but, you know, this is a guy who was married, who has, you know, grown children. And I think we can all agree that some of his behavior, this was questionable, man. You know what I mean? Whether it was a little boy or a little girl, you know, some of those things that he did or was accused of doing, it was just, it it wasn't right. So I think we should almost kind of leave it at that. And that you know what? This guy has passed on. And I think you know, by us, you know, not us uh, here on this podcast, but people in general of us beating up his legacy. I mean, it it just, I, I don't know what it does, if it does anything. We almost got to let this man rest. We got to let him go on and, and, and figure it out, you know, in, 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 the, in the next phase of whatever it is that's out there and let them d- deal with that because that man did what he did. Now, we don't know what he did, but I do know he was in some tight shirts. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> You see some screenshots out there in the streets. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, whether you're a bishop or whether you're my uncle or my cousin, or club you're security. a playboy. Yeah, you, you need to chill with them tight shirt photographs. You know what I'm saying? Like, But that's like, the question, like, though, Lamont. That's the question. Can he, can, can we put, can he, can his spirit rest with this much tumult around his name 
it, like he knows that something happened. I mean, let's let's be honest. Let's keep it a hundred. Four men came out and said, "Yo, something went down." And yeah, we see, see Maynard. Maynard, here's here's my issue with that. There's six men out there in the street that say that I have millions of millions of dollars. That's not true. So shit, I I, I don't know. Like when people say what they say, people say that all you do is drink cheap whiskey. You know what I'm saying? We know that that's not the truth. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be spud. That would be spud. You know what I'm saying? That 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 all you do is is you know again is drink the cheap bottom of the barrel stuff. So I just still feel like this guy was the head of a church. You know we got to remember, man. There's some people out here that are very ruthless. Some people that are very hungry, and they look at this man as him being you know, the head of this church that probably makes hundreds of thousands of dollars per week, you know, millions of dollars per year. And it, and, and they may have saw some sort of weakness in, in him, whatever it may have been. I don't know that they may be like, you know what, we can, we can find a way to get some money. You know what I'm saying? And let's, let's do Sounds what it is. Sounds like do- we got an apologist. Oh. Sounds like we got an apologist. <laughs> oh, Sounds like we got an apologist. All I'm saying, All I'm saying is this. My man was like, yo... I mean, let's just be honest. He sent the pictures of himself in a tight shirt. Dude, that is just too much. You can't send pictures to another man in the I'm sorry. Preston is my dude. You know what pictures me and Preston got? Me and Preston, me and Preston got pictures of I us. hope none. New I Year's. hope none. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Shut <laughs> <Okay>. up. <laughs> we, got <laughs> <pictures>. <laughs> we got pictures of us at the nightclub with the Bentley painted on the damn blanket and shit. We got pictures of us at the motherfucking nightclub with the uh the the New Year, the um the the, the Statue of Liberty and the other shit and the other shit painted on the thing, it was all geographically incorrect because it was like the Golden Gate Bridge and the Statue of Liberty and the Empire State Building all in one picture. But that's the only pictures we got. Don't no, don't no grown ass man saying no no picture to nobody with no other man talking about look at me. Hey, this dude, I, I, I lifted 275 that they check me out. No, hell no. No well, and hell no. That's some gay shit and he need to fess up to that shit and it's okay. Be gay. You can be gay and be a leader. There are tons of gay leaders. Oof. Can you define vehemence? Vehemently? <laughs> vehemently. I mean, that's like... <laughs> can you, you define you, vehemently? Did you hear how I said that shit? That was yeah, vehement. Yeah, Vehement. That was that was vehement. That was that, like hot and, and, and heavy and like with passion and shit. Well, I, let me shit, you, shit let, let me legal. let me kind of bring this back home, so you know we don't uh, you know there's there's yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a there's another mafia out there outside of the gay mafia, and that's that church mafia. And, talk that um, talk, baby. I don't talk need it. that. You know, I don't need that problem <laughs> in my Y'all life at all. You know, I'm not trying to be scared. I'm not trying to be scared. Be I'm scared. just saying that. Be listen, scared. man. You know. Regardless of whatever Bishop Eddie Long did in his closet and whatever skeletons he got in his closet, it ain't for us to judge. It's only for God to judge. And whatever he has to do or wherever he goes within that next life, that's going to be between him and his Savior. And he's going to account for whatever he did or whatever he did not do, like we all are going to do when we actually see our Lord and Savior or if whoever it is that you decide that you want to believe. We all going to have to account for the sins that we have put on this earth. So, again, we send our condolences to his family, to his church. We also, you know, want to send our condolences to the people who may not have any closure in the alleged scandal that he was about. However, that is what it is. Let's move on to P. Diddy and the shiny suit man. (laughs) <laughs> hey, you know what's fun? Before you get started, man, I, I want to try something different for this podcast, okay? Uh, give me one second. Let me try this. You ready? Yeah, I guess. All right. <laughs> today, I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. Uh... I ain't got the time. If it ain't about going up, but about being positive, about getting some money, loving God, I ain't got too much coonery, the foonery going on, the culture's getting killed. I'm not even saying nothing about it because I'm just so burnt out. I will be saying something about it. I'm, I'm, I'm in amazement on what's going on in the world. But hey, who am I? Who are? Who is I Puff? Somebody. <laughs> so those are the words of Puff Daddy himself. So before you hear with the lead, and I wanted to just make sure that we understood exactly what came from the horse's mouth. 
So, Lamont, let's go to you. Is there too much coonery and buffoonery going on in the world of hip-hop and social media? Because <laughs> I know that Puffy is a little guilty of some of that cooning and buffoonery. You know what, actually, I don't really, I can't really say that. I haven't really, I can't really say that I've seen Puffy actually do some coonery and buffoonery Ma- stuff. Spud, making the band? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nip talking talk. about, wait a minute. Nip Nip talk. Talk. <laughs> Make the band. Yo, y'all ah. ain't Cheesecake Ninja, Listen, hey, wait, wait, man. First of all, Sarah Stokes, <laughs> Sarah Stokes is my girl, man. Sarah Stokes is my girl, man. Back up off of it, man. Listen, I, I've been to Juniors, man. I, I walked the bridge, man. I did. I got my cheesecake. Come on. But we talk about on social media. I follow Diddy on social media, and I haven't really seen him do any coonery on Buffroonie. But anyways, man, before you decide to try to take it off, go back. You're right. still in the penalty box. We on Lamont right, right now. Go back. back. Penalty box and shit. Go back. <laughs> So, 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 so listen, and, and because we can say shit, don't mean you got to take advantage of it. <laughs> That's all I got left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so here's my thing: <clears throat> is if you look up the word cooning, because again, I was a little confused. Like, what technically is cooning? What's a coon? And the Urban Dictionary says it's an African American or an African person or of African descent whose sole purpose is to entertain white people. Well, if you really got to go by the definition, we got a whole lot of coons out here. Quiet as cat. No, no, no. We got to throw Oprah in the penalty box of cooning because Oprah, who I've rolled with, oh, I've rolled with her hard. Oprah has always been about that, you know, female white demographic. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, I think they're, you know, if we got to go by what this definition says, is that there are different levels of cooning and that there are a lot of people cooning, even in the record business. You know, they're told, you know, artists are told, you know, how do we get you into the crossover marketplace? Crossover is a cold word for white. You know, how do we get you in that particular space? So, again, to answer your question, if we got to be real, if we really got to be three black guys in a mic, Hell yeah. I mean, we can't say fuck, right? That's not on the list, correct? No, that's not. Okay, cool. So hell fuck yeah, there's a lot of cooning <laughs> going on. You know what I mean? And Puff, let's not get it twisted. You know, in the beginning of Bad Boy, I don't think that they had that kind of energy or air, you know, in it. But over time, as Big got big, you know, as Mace got big, even Craig Mack, these were all crossover artists in the heyday of Bad Boy. So Puff, you know what I'm saying? You know, the kind of cooning that you're talking about of what we're seeing today is different from before, but it seemed like to me that there's, there's a whole lot of levels of this cooning shit popping off, you know, again, if we're going by the basic of what the definition is. So, Maynard, I mean, am, am I reaching? Am I wrong? What, what, what do you have? Again, um, but what's the disclosure of the, the, the views of this podcast? <laughs> the views and opinions of this, of this podcast have no, are not the views and opinions of Maynard Scales. No, 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 no! I, don't don't put it on me. This this ninja here talked about damn Oprah. I'm just saying right now, y'all was talking about being afraid of the J Mafia or the B Mafia. Oprah's thing is on some shutdown altogether ish. Yeah, she People did shut down. Oprah. She did shut down uh, uh, Dave Chappelle that time. Man, you know, Puff, I mean, Puff had his position, and I think would I think unfor- I think what he's saying is that the rap culture has eclipsed the hip hop culture. But th- those people who are true to hip hop will tell you what the four things, the four basic premises of hip hop are, and none of these cats are involved with that. So those who believe in it, we we just we just don't accept Kodak Black. We don't accept. So you know, honestly, to be to be honest, except for maybe the first album from N.W.A., the rest of it was rap music. It was not hip hop. Hey, so we no, hey, now. it was it was rap music. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with rap music. Selling millions of albums for the you know, people say that Will Smith was commercial because he didn't curse and get all crazy. But isn't it more commercial to be like, yo, if if ten if ten curse words sell a million copies, if I say thirty curse words, would I sell thirty million copies? That's more commercial than than being true to yourself. Hip hop is about truth. So yes, Puff has a very good point. The only thing I'm disappointed about what Puff did is why didn't he find some way to record this so that it wasn't like seven second damn clips? It was like, on Snapchat was, though. It was on Snapchat. Yeah, was, why, why didn't he use like Periscope or Facebook Live or some shit? Because that was driving me crazy. But 
Puff is right. I want to clarify before we go. I want to clarify before we go to a break, though. Are you saying Will Smith is hip hop? I'm saying that Will Smith came out in a <laughs> hip hop community. He was, yeah, no, Will Smith, the Fresh Prince. I know you're not going to say Will Smith is hip hop, man. Yeah, I know fresh, we won't go to a break if you're going to say that Will Smith is hip hop. If you are going to categorize Will Smith as a hip hop artist, we're not going to go to break and we're going to fucking debate that. Excuse my language. I'm sorry, program director, but the fr- all right. So here you go. The first two albums of the Fresh Prince. Uh, of of uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, there was DJ solos. There was an MC. You could dislike or like his lyrics if you choose to. It's your business. There was artwork in every video. If you remember the first video, the the girls of the world in number trouble, and the other video, which was I can't re- I can't remember. There was graffiti everywhere, and there was dancing. And you talk about. The, Tell me what hip hop is. Give me the four so, so Maynard, Maynard, Give me the four pillars of hip hop. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you, Maynard. Maynard. It Maynard. Ain't Will it's very Smith. simple. No, it's not. Listen, what the is, elements of hip hop, there, there are five elements. The first one is B boying. Okay. Mm-hmm. The second one is MCing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and we'll get to the rest, but are you. Will Smith, uh, wait, wait. Will Smith wait, wait. MC, right? He so was an MC. So, uh, that's what I'm saying. Are you the saying first, that Will Smith is an MC? The Fresh Prince. The Fresh Prince. Was an MC. You mean to tell me that you can put uh, Will Smith, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, as an MC he against the- Rakim, against KRS One? I didn't say you he mean was one of the- No, 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 no. I never said he was in the top ten or the top thirty or Let's whatever. Call him an MC. He was. Are you? Are you? So he, if that's before, the case, that means Mik- Migos. Migos is a fucking MC. Bad okay. and bougie. They're MCs then. We're, so they're hip hop. All, right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, they're five. You said they're five elements. All right. right. They're, they're graffiti. There's DJ. There was a, there's a DJ on Bad and Bougie. Yeah, they there's got a DJ. Yeah, yeah. There's a DJ. DJ. Hold on. They got DJs. No, they got DJ. D- no, 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 no. Not having a DJ in your group. Is there a DJ solo in Bad and Bougie? It doesn't say a DJ fucking solo. It just says yeah. DJ. The, the the premise of hip hop started with the DJ. The DJ came to the party with the turntables and allowed the rappers to get on the mic. The rappers didn't have an opportunity to do anything without the DJ. It starts with the DJ. It I'm sorry, man. I love level. you, and I know that you are representing your hometown of Philly, right. and I get it. I'm not mad at you. Stick with the home team. You stick with Bill Cosby. I'm, I'm with you on that one, man. You going down with the ship with the Philly thing. But I'm sorry. Will Smith is not considered a hip hop artist. Yeah, I he's just not an MC, bro. I'm sorry, he's dog. Not. Nope. Y'all he's not tripping. You, you know who you know who signed I'm Smith cutting you off. Half? We went over. Who? We're going to a break. We'll be right back right after this is more. Nah, that guy's with a mic. <laughs> <laughs> It's 2017. It's time to get your appetite right, man. Stop eating all that frozen food. You need to get fresh food. That's why the big news about Wendy's 4 for 4 meal just got even bigger. And we go into 2017 with big things with Wendy's. See how the choice of a junior bacon cheeseburger or a crispy chicken BLT that sound good right about now just changed the value game all over again. No more eating all of that frozen food. We only getting it fresh in 2017. Meal includes the choice of a junior bacon cheeseburger or a crispy chicken BLT, four piece nugget, small fries, and a drink. Can't get that anywhere else in the world. You heard me? That's why you need to head over to Wendy's, get it all fresh. Fresh. Never frozen. Stop putting all that frozen food in your body. Get it fresh from Wendy's. Often not valid in Alaska and Hawaii. And now back to the show. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen. It is that time again. It's that time of the week again, ladies and gentlemen, that you all have to suffer through the next five minutes. And don't feel bad because we have to suffer through it as well. This is the time where Maynard get the opportunity to give someone a cactus and talk about all of the irrelevant news stories that went on in the news cycle for the last past week that he texts us at 4 o'clock in the morning saying we should just talk about this. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Maynard's Five Minutes of Fame. Maynard, time Thank starts you, right now. Lord. <laughs> they finally gonna let the leashes off the pieces. Now here we go. 
Hey, Leashes off the beast is his men. Um, uh, trademark. Uh, Trademark, copywritten by Maynard J. Scales Jr., uh, all rights in perpetuity until he dies and, and, and whatnot. Lamont, you can't have it. So um, <clears throat> let me say this before I even get started on my three, four, five topics that I want to discuss. Three topics plus one. I know, but I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> first off, let me say this. Two weeks, three weeks ago, I talked about Mariah Carey, and I said that she looked like um, a plump baby New Year. That I've been uh, this been brought to my attention that that is a form of body shaming, and I agree it is. And I shouldn't have said that. First of all, Mariah Carey is my cup of tea. I think she's beautiful and sexy. I just want to apologize to the women out there who may have felt like, yo, um, you know, you 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 speaking down on Mariah or you speaking down on women who may have a, a few extra pounds because I know for sure that I got a few extra pounds that I need to get rid of too. So, yo, Mariah, you're beautiful. I, I appreciate that. And I know when I'm wrong and I can say it. I don't have a problem with that. Now, let's get to the real deal. Regina King. Regina King is a freaking boss. Y'all need to know this. Regina King probably in the past 15 years is about the baddest f- black female actress in the game. But she just scored a two-year deal with ABC um, television production studios to continue to produce um, projects for them. Regina King, that's a boss. Give her my coveted air horn. <laughs> One more. <laughs> there you go, Regina. I love you. Yo, what's up? I mean, you've been doing it so long since Brenda from 227, since you better go to the stove with that, all of that. You my you my G. I love Regina King. I think she's amazing. She's done every all the things I've seen her in. She's amazing. Let's also, next thing, I just want to just make this an uplifting event. Let's support black women in black women's beauty. We saw uh, ju- just not long ago, um, uh, Michelle Obama come on the Fallon show and do her thank you notes and people thanking Michelle Obama. And I just watched her and I just, I just cried. I ain't going to lie to y'all. As I saw people thanking Michelle Obama, I just felt like she brings so, so much happiness into the world and she's such a positive influence. I'm glad that my daughter has an opportunity to see a woman like her, but what's more important, a friend of mine tried to end tried to share with me that we particularly as black men don't appreciate black women's beauty in the way that, that we need to. For instance, our world and our society puts pressures on them to get perms or weaves or extensions or what, or wigs or whatever. And that the black woman's hair that I didn't know a lot of my life. I just thought that black women had straight hair. I mean, I remember they went in the kitchen and they got perms and all that kind of stuff. Listen, if a sister wants to wear her hair natural, black men, we have to appreciate that natural beauty that black women have is important. And we got to understand that our daughters, our children, they look like that. And that's important. So, yo, big shout to black women and the beauty that they bring. Black girl magic in 2016 was a thing. We're going to make it a bigger thing in 2017. Blackish, the show recap from last week. The blackish show is not this past week where they were talking about. I don't know what they were talking about. They were talking about in the previous show about the Barack Obama to Don Trump election and how people felt. And yo, my man Dre, Andre, um, Anthony Anderson's character, Andre, dropped a line where he just he went on in on his boss and said, Yo, how are you gonna question my love for this country? I love this country probably more than you. I love this country because there were times in this country where they didn't let me walk down the street. There were times in this country they didn't they didn't let me even use the same bathroom or drink out of the water fountain. But I believe that this country is going to be better in the future. And I have to hold on to that belief. And you know what? And I'm I'm paraphrasing what he said. That's not exactly what he said, but that was the crux of his speech. And as I watch all the way. Well, uh, the story of LBJ and Martin Luther King and passing the Civil Rights Act. And I look at all these different things that are going on in the world. I recognize that America is has a lot of warts. America is not perfect. But America is an experiment in progress. And we as African-Americans, as black people, as, as Mexican people, as Dominicans, as whatever your race or your culture may be, as Christian, as Muslim, as atheists, we got to participate and we can't decide that because Don Trump is president that we give up. We got to push forward, be positive, <clears throat> be a part of the change of America. Now let's get on to the cactus of the week. 
Oh my god! Cactus of the week goes. I got a. I got a. I need a knife. Can somebody hand me? Hand me the, yeah, thank you very much. I'm a, cut this damn cactus <laughs> up a couple of times. This cactus goes to a special A people. God bless them all. Today is an MLK day. I think everybody in America believes that Martin Luther King Jr. is a great American. And everybody believes that as a great Amer- as a great American who has passed, that while he had his warts, and there may have been, uh, it, you know, allegations of sexual misconduct and blah blah blah, the MLK did things for America, not Black America, not the African American, but America that were important. But Biloxi, Mississippi, Biloxi, Mississippi, deep, deep, deep down in the South, in the Delta, or some shit of that nature. Their eight con- their eight uh, city council persons, there were seven and plus the mayor, decided they're going to rename MLK Day Great Americans Day and steal away Martin Luther King's spot. How are you going to take the shine off of a brother who did probably the most amazing things for the country between 1900 and 2000? I don't think anybody did the most amazing things had he, had he done with the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and the Fair Housing Act, along with the help of Kennedy and LBJ. You know what? I hope you all choke just a little bit. Not to death. I don't want you to die. I don't want that shit on you. On the, that's too much on my conscience. But I hope you all choke on cactus. Some prickly, hairy, dirty, nasty Mexican cactus that Don Trump brought over from across the border, across his big, beautiful wall. So there it is, y'all. That's my five minutes. I ain't got shit else to say. Goddamn, choke Biloxi uh, city council persons. <laughs> Damn. Let's move on, man. As we end this show, we got to talk about speaking of Beyonce and the Dream Girls and all that. And I'm telling you. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Lamont, the gay mafia got her, huh? Yo, G, let me tell you something. And this with all due respect, but, but they are a mafia. You know what I'm saying? That LGBTQ whatever... The letters are, they the mafia. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're very variations of mafias out here, and they ain't having it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to do what you want to do, but you're not going to rock with us and just think you're going to come on our TV shows. You know what I'm saying? You think you're going to promote your movie? We're going to call Ellen. We got that down. You think you're going to get it popping and go sing for the man that makes fun of disabled children and, and homosexuals? But you're not going to eat out here. You know what I'm saying? That sounds like some mafia stuff to me. Hey, yo, I mean, Lamont, let me let, let me ask you one quick thing. What's the uh, and you might not know the answer. What's the dude? It's a white dude on Fox. His name is Shep Shepherd or Shep. What's his name? You know you know what I'm talking about. You mean on Fox News? Yeah, yeah. I, his last his last name is Shepherd. I don't remember his first name. Okay, all right, all right. And Anderson Cooper. That's CNN. He's not on Fox. It's CNN. And Don Lemon. That's CNN. Yo, it's a lot of gay. It's a lot of gay dudes in the game. Hey man, I'm they make it, they, and they really, they really, they really doing their thing, right? Listen, listen, man. I, I, I'm not even really mad. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad at how they're moving and how they're letting people know, like, yo, if you go against, you know, or, and or disrespect what we do and how we do, it's gonna be some consequences. Now, where I grew up, that sounds like a bully, but some people just say that's how it works. You know what I'm saying? Because you almost got to be afraid of saying something against them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't say, like, I don't agree with how they roll. Because if you do, you say it on the wrong platform, they are coming to see you. So that's not like some bully shit to me. You know what I'm so saying? Let me, you, let me ask you this. So why would she commit to it in the first place, in the first place and then backtrack after it? I mean, I understand that, you know, the, 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 you know, the fans was like, oh, no, we shutting all this down, you know, and I get it, you know, that it, it's, a, it, it's a bigger loss in the long term than it is in the short term, but... I mean, th- th- this goes back to my Mariah Carey point. Like, Lamont, you in the music industry, don't they, these people have people for this? Don't they say, yo, before you even commit to this, we're not going to do this. You can't do this. Your, your whole fans are. And I understand some artists are just like, you know what, I'm going to do whatever it is that I want to do. But why would you commit in the first place to actually sing at the inauguration and then backtrack it? Because that doesn't make her look even more stupid to say, oh, yeah, I committed to it first, but now you guys came out and said, oh, yeah, 
you don't want me to do it, I'm not going to do it? That's whack to me. Listen, I heard a little bird told me, allegedly, that her agent got a call for her to get a few hundred G's to come sing a song. She's like, a few hundred G's? All right, cool, let's roll. They didn't think that it was going to be as much of a backlash on her singing at the inauguration. A few simple. hundred G's is a, yeah. that's, yeah. that's a grip. Yeah, so it's about as simple as that. So, I mean, she's just trying to work, you know what I'm saying? And she even said it, you know, and she, I think it was a little lame of an excuse is that, you know, it was a lapse in her judgment. No, it wasn't no lapse. You got the deposit. The deposit was like half up front. And the reality was that she had to get that bread back, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody was like, let's take this money, sing these songs, and keep it moving. But that mafia wasn't having it. You know what I'm saying? Ellen and the squad was like, no, we ain't doing that. Hey, yo, so let me ask you a quick question then, Lamont. Then let me jump in. So Talladega College, a small black college in, in the South, they decided they're going to jump on. And they picked up, a, a, they needed like $25,000 to, right. to participate. They right. had like $237,000 or more as a result of saying that they down with the D. Trump um, inauguration, which I really feel like, you know what, Talladega College should do that shit. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it was only they only got that money based upon them, you know, running that article and doing I mean, running that story and doing an interview on Fox News. Correct. Now, I thought they got I mean, that that money came from alumni and supporters and sponsors and all that. No, my my research was that the money didn't really come in until they did an interview on Fox News and how they put up a GoFundMe page right. that ran across the screen on Fox News. Well, once it once it got out there, then those Fox News supporters like, oh no, we need some brown people to come sing and dance and AKA perform f- for the sole purpose to entertain white people, which is AKA <laughs> cooning. cooning. <laughs> so you know what? We'll run you a little bit of chain. What you need, a couple hundred grand? That's no big deal. We spend that kind of money you know, at the casino or the the blackjack table. We'll give you a few hundred grand. No big deal. Okay, but let me ask this, Dunn. If that 235000 or 40000 or whatever it is is a nice piece of change for them and their alumni wasn't raising that money, those are a lot, that's a lot of scholarship money. I mean, isn't that, is that not a good thing? I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it's, it's the same thing if you do a history about the NAACP. The reality is that the NAACP was not founded by, by anybody right. that looked like me and you. Am right. I correct? That's correct. That's true. So, I mean, you know, if if you have that Ninja, attitude... Hey, yeah, yo, ninjas don't know that. Ninjas don't know that. Not. Of course not. So, of course, you know, if we're going to start to look at, you know, is it just about the money or where the money comes from? Because I'm a firm believer that all money ain't good money. You know what I'm saying? Is that, you know, there are ties and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um allegiance that come with that cheese that you're taking. So, you know, some people have this attitude of, oh, I'll take it all. It doesn't matter. But for me personally, all money ain't good money. I've learned it over the years. Okay. You know, a, a certain attachments come with that. And I and I, I wouldn't want it. You know what I mean? I, I w- if, if you got to go to Fox News to, to get that bread, then you know what? There's a whole other issue that's going on, you know, within that particular institution. So on the Jennifer Holiday piece and why she canceled or did decide to do it or didn't decide or whatever the case may be, Lamont, you always say it's about clicks, right? Absolutely. So, you know what I'm saying? Even if she jumped in and jumped back out, let me tell you something. Five days ago, I was, and I love Jennifer Holiday, and I'm telling you. And all it was the other shit that she got. She got another shit. That's, I mean, she got like four or five bang ass joints mm-hmm. that everybody knows that it, this is Jennifer Holiday. That's her shit. Mm-hmm. She's just tops of the game with that. And uh, Jennifer Hudson did a phenomenal job covering one of her joints. Mm-hmm. But nobody was checking for Jennifer Holiday um, on uh, December twenty seventh. Okay. And so are, so are you trying it, to say going, that she did it for about clicks? I'm saying whether she did it for clicks or she or it was inadvertently that she got some clicks, it's a good look for her anyway. What, what did P.T. Barnum say? All news, bad or good, all news is good news for me. So, you know what I'm saying? As long as they're talking about me, I think it's the Jennifer Holiday model where this is concerned. That, you know, Because nobody, look, think about it like this. We are in our, <clears throat> um, you know, we're in the age group. Uh, that may be a little bit. We're in the thirty-five to fifty-four demo. 
just to say to, just to say it. There are a lot of people who are listening who might not even have achieved 35 who don't even know who Jennifer Holiday really is, and all of a sudden they know who she is. Right. So I'm just saying, yo, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity where Jennifer Holiday is concerned. Yeah, because, but now she's out of a couple hundred thousand dollars, though. Well, then she should just go ahead and do that shit. But she might be out of a couple hundred thousand dollars and she's standing on principle. And that's cool. But now those four or five little, you know, nightclubs that she's going to play in the next six, seven weeks where, you know, they were going to probably pack like, you know, 800 people. They might pack like 1800 people. Yeah, but she ain't going to make up a hundred, a, a couple hundred grand in, in 2017, man. I don't see but it. She was, but she wasn't going to make a couple hundred grand to, to, in 2017 anyway. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I mean she might make 50. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she might even whoa, make a hundred. She might even whoa, make a man. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Jay Holiday, she can get a couple hundred Gs. That's not uh, a lot of pay. From where? 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 Man, listen, this is what y'all got to... Listen, man, listen. Uh, uh, Lamont, listen. Hold, 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 hold on, 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 because we just did this practice a little bit earlier this evening, the three of us. Lamont, you living in X City, right? 17 miles or less from where you live. Let's say she's appearing in the conference center of the Jacob Javits Arena. The little conference room where it holds like 6,000 people and they charging $35 one night only. You going to buy that ticket? Listen, man. Listen. Are you going to buy that ticket? Yes or no? Listen, no. Are you going to buy? Can, okay. Then. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. 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 I, I saw you in New York with Christopher Williams. And that, that joint right. was packed. They came out to see Christopher Williams. Christopher Williams right. is probably on the same level as, you know, Jennifer Hell Holiday. No. Hold on, hold Hell on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just asking Hell Lamont because no. he knows, he was you know what I'm saying, you know. Nigga, I understand. On. What's Didn't that got you? to do with anything? Christopher That's Williams in New Jack sister. City, dog. He was a he, he was my brother's kipper. He was just a pretty. We motherfucker can't say the, motherfucker no more. Damn it. it Anyways, can it, Jennifer Holiday pack out BB King? Yes, and, and and for the record, we're going to probably be banned from the podcast system by the end of the month <laughs> at the fucking rate that we're going. So you know what? Let's just get all the cussing out. Someone, yes. How many, no, how many listen. You getting the BB Kings? Listen, listen. I think maybe twelve or fifteen hundred. Somewhere around there. But see here, May- Maynard, but see, here's the deal. 1500 at BB Kings. Right. But see, Maynard, here's where the small or where you're showing your small mind. And I just heard someone say this the other day. It, it was even Teddy Riley. He was actually on Foxhole. He was doing an interview. You know, shout to my man over there at Foxhole. Is that, you know, you got to remember that there are people around the world that actually um, are very more appreciative of our historical urban music than what we are in the state in the United States of America. So when you have an artist like Alexander O'Neill who can go to London, who stays in London, who makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year singing them songs that he made 15, 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? I, I so, love Alexander O'Neill, but I think he needs to, if he's making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, I'm going to ask him to work on them teeth. I'm just saying. So you know what, dude? He got to work on them teeth. That is the reason why we're going to be, that's the reason why we're going to be banned. Man, every yeah, single he gotta week, you're going to be, teeth. Listen, Come on, man, man. you're going to be apologizing every single week, man. We talk about music right now. Anyway, let's right. get to the marketing tip of the week so that way we can wrap this thing up because we already over our time and we already didn't say way too many motherfuckers that we were supposed to say on this episode. So anyways, Lamont, the floor is yours. Please educate yeah, the folks. Yes, let, let me bring a, a level of calm and, and, and peace and tranquility and, and, and give something to help the people. Because, again, we want to apologize to everyone that Maynard's offended tonight. But we, and every we other week that we've done this podcast. <laughs> every other week, because Maynard, <laughs> Jesus. But my marketing tip is very simple this week, man. Do your homework. You know, Puff talked about it earlier, about the cooning and the buffooning. And he talked about being able to go back and and look at some documentaries. And there's one that I wanted to definitely reference that I thought was very, very good. It's called The Hip Hop Evolution. You know, if anybody or everybody who has Netflix is on Netflix, if you don't know where to go on the bootleg site, you know, hit us up at three black guys in the mic at Gmail. Whoa, 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 whoa. I will t- say nasty things about certain people, but I'm not involved with piracy, sir. Excuse me at this point. Because Warner, RIAA, and the MPAA do not appreciate piracy, Mr. Hayes. No, no, no. We didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't say anything about piracy. What I said was, before you cut me off, Maynard, 
is we would lead them to a place where they could see a clip, not the entire documentary, but a clip of the actual documentary. So thank you, Manny, for cutting me off once again. So again, the name of the documentary is called Hip Hop Evolution. It's, it, I mean, it, it, it takes a journey on hip hop that even I didn't know about some of the you know mainstays of hip hop. And it gave you a different you know outlook and twists and turns of some of the nuts and bolts of what some of these guys had to do and who are uh, what they're still doing in order to break some of these hip hop records. So I think again, do your homework. Go out and do as much research as you can because if this is a craft that you're trying to be in, you you, you got to know where you came from to definitely understand where you're going. So Spud man, and that's my marketing tip of the week. Well, I appreciate that. That puts episode nine in the can, ladies and gentlemen. We truly appreciate it. If you have a question for Lamont or Eva Maynard uh, and you want to know anything, you want to know more about your music and either how to get your song played on the radio or any marketing tips or any uh, music tips that you want to know, you, again, you can email us at three black guys uh, with a mic at gmail.com. Again, that's the number three blackguyswithamike at gmail.com and we will talk to you again next Tuesday for episode number 10. We didn't put 10 of them in the can already and we only in the 2017. So it's hey, early hey, for us. Before, before, you, before you let everybody go, can you give oh, them a quick shit. preview about next week because we got a special interview, right? Ooh wee. Ooh wee. <laughs> Ooh wee. Or is it too early to discuss that? It's, Should we just you? You got to tune in next week to see who we're gonna talk to next week. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, and we'll talk Women, to y'all it, next Tuesday on Three Black Guys with a Mic. Ladies, you gonna love it. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Thank you so very much for tuning in to this episode of Three Black Guys with a Mic. For previous episodes and more info about us, check out our website at threeblackguyswithamic.com. Remember, we want your feedback on the podcast. So go to iTunes, Google Play, or however you listen to this podcast, rate us, and leave us a review. Plus, subscribe to our podcast for new episodes and celebrity guests every week. Until next week, my baby, peace out.